Hey there, superstar. I am so excited to share with you in this video how to get more speaking engagements. So you want to get in front of more audiences. You want more audience to hear your message. You want to make a bigger impact and contribute to the world in a bigger way by finding more speaking engagements. Well, that's what this video is all about. Now, the problem I find when I get this question is that usually most people who ask it are hoping that there is some sort of single resource that will solve all their problems, that will help them get booked, that'll tell them where all the engagements are happening and facilitate this one and done. And that is absolutely not the way that this works. And in fact, even if there were some sort of place where all the speaking engagements were listed, you'd still have to do the work of reaching out, getting in touch, getting a meeting, sending a proposal, and doing all the work required to land a speaking engagement. Now, that is absolutely important to know how to do, and I highly recommend doing it. And in this video, I'm gonna focus more on how to build a long-term speaking, speaking brand that attracts speaking engagements to you rather than you having to constantly go out and find them. How does that sound? So to lay it out and to kind of give you a context for how I like to approach landing speaking engagements, I'm gonna give you a, a distinction between two different ways of, or two different energies around landing engagements. There's the old way and the way that I'm gonna present. The old way is kind of like you getting a butterfly net and going out and catching butterflies, running around all the time and expending a lot of energy to get one client, AKA butterfly, at a time. The other option, and this is what I'm gonna be focusing on, is you cultivating a garden, planting the seeds, f getting these flowers flourishing that attract butterflies so that at any given time you have plenty of opportunities coming to you. That's way more graceful, way easier, and in my opinion, way more fun and lucrative. So that's what I'm gonna focus on. And before I get into the five things that you can do to build your inbound butterfly garden, I wanna invite you to take a moment to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and maybe even post a comment or a question below. So the first thing that you need to do to build the kind of brand that attracts speaking engagements is to narrow your focus. Now, as a speaker and as one who has been there and done that, I know how scary it can feel to narrow your focus and the resistance that you might feel, the feeling that if I narrow my focus, I'm gonna be shutting out so many opportunities. I know, I get it. And what I've discovered is that the more clear you can get about where you add the most value and where you feel the most passionate, specifically, the easier it is to market your speaking services. And the reason for that is that you don't have to market it as much because you will start to receive more and more referrals. The narrower I got in my speaking, the more I focused in on my superstar clients that I absolutely love working with, the easier it was for them to find me because my name started making its way around. I started to focus in, instead of on helping all sorts of business owners, I narrowed the focus to helping consultants and coaches and speakers. And from there, I narrowed in on consultants, coaches, and speakers who wanted to develop retreats-based, mastermind-based businesses. That was a seven-year-long process of narrowing. Actually, it was even longer than that. And so ultimately though, now when people are like, hey, I wanna do a retreat, right away people are like, Michelle Villalobos is the person that you wanna call. And so that creates a lot of inbound speaking opportunities for me because when associations of consultants and coaches and speakers wanna talk about different ways to monetize, they get referred me as a, as a result. And so I have to do a lot less outreach, a lot less effort to get the opportunities because I'm known in that field and that industry. And so I invite you and encourage you to go narrow and deep and see where do you provide the most value so that you can have the highest recognition and referral opportunities. Now, the second thing you'll need to do is to establish yourself as a thought leader in a specific area of focus. Now, this is not the exact same as niche. Here, what I'm talking about is your message or your process or the unique value that you've learned how to deliver. Not necessarily who you deliver it to, but what is the message and really positioning yourself as the leader, as the torchbearer of that message and putting it out every way you can in ways that you enjoy. So for example, blogging, podcasting, 
speaking, obviously, networking, email marketing, YouTubing, however it is that you can get that message out and become the thought leader that's uniquely associated to that message. And I highly recommend picking something that you can own. There are a million speakers out there on resilience. How can you say resilience in your own unique and special way? I have a client, her name is Leanne Marie Webster, and she is resilient. She has done so much in her life and in her career. In fact, I talk about her on this channel all the time. And recently she started thinking about speaking about resilience, but resilience is a topic that everybody's got. And so instead, she's looking at her Iron Man experience and finding terminology that's connected to Iron Man that's all about resilience. And in fact, we're very close to coming up with her brand, but I'm not gonna be the person to take the veil off the brand. I will unveil it to you at a later date. But know that instead of resilience, she might pick something like, 19 seconds to the finish because her story of resilience, that, that's not her brand by the way, but that's a really good one that I should tell her, is that she crossed the finish line with 19 seconds before the deadline to move from the Ironman bike race to the, the final run. And if she hadn't crossed the finish line at those 19 seconds, she would have been um, ejected from the race. And that's what happened to her the first time that she took the, that she did the Ironman and she didn't finish, she failed. And so the second time she had 19 minutes, 19 seconds, left so she could choose 19 seconds as a way to talk about resilience without saying hey i'm a resilient speaker so this is what i invite you to do to own the messaging to own the brand that's uniquely yours the third thing that i recommend doing is to get really deeply involved and engaged in your industry associations. Find out what are the events and start to get into those events. Start to reach out to those events. Reach out to the leaders of those industries and those associations to become engaged. A lot of times these industries like to pull from their own people, people who are contributing. I've been deeply involved in NSA for, gosh, since 2012 or 2013. And now because of my eight year, nine year trajectory with them, I'm able to have trust and credibility with that organization and I'm able to do speaking engagements inside of that organization. The fourth thing I wanna invite you and encourage you to do, which is a little bit outside the scope of how to land more speaking engagements, but it is gonna help you, and that is to monetize with some sort of back-end revenues. One of the biggest mistakes that speakers make that I've seen them make, they come to me with, is that they only are monetizing the speaking engagements themselves. Meaning they're only making money by selling speeches or gigs. That is a recipe for a roller coaster revenue model that goes up and down. It's usually not very stable, not very sustainable, and very difficult to maintain. It creates, in my opinion, a lot of anxiety. What I would invite you to do is to start to reframe speaking engagements Rather than as the business model, think of them as the front end of the business model. The speaking engagement is the beginning of the relationship with a client. It's where you are introduced to a client, maybe introduced to hundreds of clients if they're in the audience, but what can you do after that engagement? What's on the back side of it? And I'm not talking about $10 books. I'm talking about consulting, coaching, masterminding, other types of more upscale, more high touch, high value offerings. And finally, especially once you've made it through these other things, I recommend investing in support. Hiring somebody to support you in doing the outreach. Hiring a marketing person to help you stabilize your marketing and get consistent marketing activity. Hiring someone that might even be able to book those engagements for you. Although I will say this, no agent and no bureau is gonna to wanna to take on a brand new speaker without a track record. Agents and bureaus, much like publishers these days, wanna put their money on a, a winning horse. They wanna know that you can win already, that you can land engagements and deliver on them. They want established speakers and generally they're not gonna ramp you up unless you're some sort of celebrity. If you are a speaker and you're looking to build and grow your speaking business, and especially if you're looking to monetize your speaking in new ways, let's connect. You can book a discovery call with me personally for free at superstardiscoverycall.com or just click on the link below. Thanks.